Hey guys, what's up? Red Raven here, and back with video number two on the Blue Complete Comprehensive series. Now, in this video, I'm going to go over everything that I, I told you about in video one, which is, you know, how to use the oscillators and what all of those knobs and buttons do to create sounds that um, are as big as they possibly can be without using any filters or effects or any of the other um, things built within Blue, because I figured the best way to do this series would be start with the basics and then expand upon that. So I've broken it down into a bunch of little steps so that it's like taking baby steps and then at the last video we'll take the training wheels off and we'll go balls out and use as much as we can to get the biggest, best sounds we can, alright? So this is video two and this is going to focus only on oscillators and envelopes already attached to the volumes on those said oscillators. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out this preset again, since I'm just recording this directly after stopping the last video. So we have now defaulted out blue. So I figure for this one, I've already shown you a lot of bases and stuff in my previous tutorials. So this one I figured we'll do like a kind of um, pad slash um, arp type of thing without changing notes within the arpeggiator. So it'll be like a step sequencer thing. But we're going to only do it using envelopes and stuff within Blue. So I'm going to show you some cool little tips and tricks. So let's get to it, alright? So we're going to be using algorithm number one. So we're only going to be using subtractive synthesis within this video. In the next one, I'll cover FM and RM a little bit more. And if I have time, I might actually cover it in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So since I've already decided that we want to do kind of like a pad... Um, sequence type sound, I'm going to use some... Some I call them soft uh, waveforms. That, that that being that they're not really harsh and they have you know nice, you know soft you know tonal qualities to them like sine waves and triangles do. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and use a triangle, but I'm gonna go to the additive triangles for this. So I'm gonna go additive triangle one, and then for oscillator B, I'm going to just use additive, and we'll just go hollow. Okay. So triangle one, the additive triangle one at a C5 sounds like this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the volume of this synthesizer up for you guys real quick. So it sounds like this, nothing special. And if we listen to oscillator B, also nothing special. So we're gonna use those two oscillators to get a decent sound going here, all right? So first let's focus on oscillator A here. And we need to make it a little bit better. We need to kind of give it some dimension. So we're going to use some pulse width modulation on it since that's a feature that's listed within our oscillator tab here. So we're going to go ahead and turn the pulse width modulation up a bit and then go to the LFO tab and highlight PWMA in the upper left hand corner. And I'm not going to use any sync because I like the pulse width modulation to kind of be a bit random if you will. I don't like it to be perfectly in time with my song because it seems to make the sound a little bit more fat and if every bit of movement in your synth is tempo synced it just seems to lose some quality and heart and soul to the sound if you will. So I'm just going to randomly select the speed here so we'll go, I don't know, let's go uh, 1.53 hertz here and let's take a listen to how it sounds now. I'm going to go ahead and turn this up for you a little bit more here. So you hear we're getting a little bit more shaped. And let's go ahead and mess with the symmetry here and see what happens. I like that. It kind of goes from a triangle almost to a uh, saw wave type of sound there. So how can we make that even more interesting without using any filters or effects? Well, the only option we really have would be wave shaping or detuning it or a volume envelope. So I'm going to go for a volume envelope. So in the bottom section of blue if you click the ENV tab, not the multi ENV but just the ENV tab, you'll see that this is the all of the filters that are default attached to a parameter within blue. So you have oscillator A through F volume envelopes, you have filter A and B cutoff envelopes, and then you have the master volume envelope. So we're going to highlight the top box which is oscillator A and we're going to drag the amount all the way up so that this envelope is fully affecting the volume of oscillator A. Okay, now I said we kind of want this to be like a sequenced sound, so how are we going to do that without using the step sequencer 
or arpeggiators within Blue. Well, Blue's envelopes have this handy feature here called Envelope Retrigger. And it is automatically tempo synced, and you can select something like uh, 1 4th or 1 8th. I'm going to use 1 8th for this tutorial. And I'm going to go ahead and drag the sustain down a good bit here. And I'm going to leave the decay time how it is for now, so I can just show you what this sounds like. So I'm again going to press a C5. And you hear we now have like a bit of a sequence going on there. And because of the phase modulate or pulse width modulation, sorry, you hear that it's kind of a bit random on what sound we're going to get on each of those uh, plucks, if you will. So we can adjust the decay time to get a different type of sound. That's a bit much, or we can shorten it. But I'm going to go ahead and right click and set to default. And then I'm just going to adjust the tension so that it's kind of more rounded. And then I'm going to turn the decay time down just a bit here. Using a touchpad on my on my laptop so it can be a little tricky. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of attack to this envelope. So we're going to go just a little bit here. So we still have that that constant rate, but it fades in instead of being a constant plucking sound. Okay, and that's all we're going to do for oscillator A for now. So now let's go to oscillator B and take a listen to it again. I'm going to turn the volume up for you here. So this is going to be kind of like the, the overtone to the triangle wave. So we're going to go ahead and detune it plus 12 cents here so that we get a bit of a fatter sound just by using some detuning. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a bit of feed just so we can get a little bit rougher sound, maybe not quite that much. That sounds good. And then I'm going to kind of mess with the symmetry and see what happens. I like that. And I'm going to drag my pulse width modulation up again and then go back to the LFO tab. But this time I'm going to highlight PWMB. So we're messing with the LFO rate of oscillator B's pulse width modulation. This time I'm going to use a different waveform for the LFO. So this time I want to use a uh, saw up. So that would be an upward ramp, if you will. And once it hits the top, it immediately drops down and ramps up again. So for this one, I'm going to drag up a faster rate than we used for oscillator A. And since it's going to have that kind of pluck, I want this one to kind of be tempo sync. So we're going to go ahead and turn the tempo sync on. And we're going to go down to a 1 fourth rate here. And that's going to be oscillator B's pulse width modulation. So let's go to the envelope tab again here and highlight oscillator B and drag the amount all the way up again. You can mess around with different amounts of uh, modulation to get different types of sounds here, but I want it to be fully affected. And we're going to do basically the same thing we did on the last one. We're going to make it kind of a pluck. And since this one has an upward ramp, if we add a downward pluck at the beginning, it'll kind of give us a uh, an odd effect. So for this I want the sustain to be a bit higher so that we can still hear the ramping sound and I want the decay time to be quite a bit shorter here and let's go ahead and take a listen now and that's kinda cool so we're gonna go ahead and set our envelope retrigger to uh, one fourth so that it's the same rate as the pulse width modulations so let's take a listen now So you hear we kind of get a back uh, slap to that, so we can get some cool sounds out of that. So let's go ahead and turn oscillator A back on and hear how that sounds. Okay, and now I'm going to turn oscillator B down in relation to A, so we get a better blend of the two. And I want to kind of give oscillator A a bit of wave shaping here, so I'm going to turn the wave shaping up and go to the wave shaping tab and just kind of drag around a bit here to roughen up that triangle a bit. There we 
go. So now let's turn oscillator B back on. And you can start hearing how you can get a lot of movement with just a couple basic things only in the oscillator tab. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in two more oscillators to the mix. I'm going to turn them both to a saw wave here. I'm going to turn one down an octave, and then the other one I'm going to detune by minus 12 cents. And I'm going to leave it at the default ratio. If you have t trouble tweaking these knobs, you can hold shift down, and that will allow you to fine tune them so that the um, amount that, that you have to move your mouse is more to get less of a change, if that makes sense. So... We're going to go ahead and turn the volume on these two down because these are just kind of be our background. And we're going to again go to the envelope tab and we're going to select oscillator C here. And we're just going to solo out oscillator C. And we're going to add a decent attack to this and a decent decay here. So we're just going to kind of have it fade in and then slowly fade down. We're going to re raise the sustain time up and we're going to drag a bit of release to it. And I forgot to turn the amount up. And I should probably turn the volume up so you can hear what I'm doing here. Okay. And I'm going to right click over the envelope drawing and I'm going to copy that and paste that on oscillator D. So if we turn oscillator C and D on. Okay, and if we blend that in with oscillator A and B, okay, you can start to hear how we get a bit of a nice fat sound with a good bit of movement, and we haven't used any... Sorry about that, my microphone problem again. And you can see we get a lot of movement without using any filters or effects, and we can get a nice fat sound just using some simple distortions and envelopes that repeat to act like a step sequencer. And you can play this at high octaves or low octaves. And there you go. That's it for video two. I'll be back with video three to expand on this same sound even more using filters and effects to make this exact sound that we just created even bigger. And that's it for this. And this is Red Raven peacing out.